Right, also with this from the underside, you see a bolt hole there, and another one just there. Right, so there's this bolt. actually sit with its retainer just on this outer side this basically keeps the main drum shaft in position For the moment I'm just going finger tight and then I'll tighten it up when I come to the bottom end, well to the sump. And this one fits in there. Again, I'll tighten it up when I come to that side. Before I actually put the retaining clamps on, I just want to make sure that it's all in place. So now I can go ahead on this end and replace, well, fit the retainer and then the circlet. All right, I've now got it lined up. I've just double checked it. I actually had this uh, double checked to actually when I took it out because obviously I took a series of photos etc of how everything was before I removed it and you'll see the notch which basically fits over that screws up and sits right in that lip there I actually had this notch here at about 8 o'clock position so I was over 90 degrees out. So that's actually now lined up. So that should now go back together. So I can get this on. I can get the circlip on. So Right, there you go, and that's back in location. So now this bit underneath that bolt there, or that retainer, I can now bolt in from the other side and that will lock into that groove on the bottom of this and basically lock this in place. And then I can also tighten up the bolt the other side underneath that I showed you earlier. Right, so it's this one here, you'll see it come up, it's a 14 mil. Alright, so that is tight. And that is now locked in position. So all I have to do now, this bolt here, also got to tighten that in. Again, that's a 14 mil. Uh, 
and that actually locks the shaft in place. Right, so happy with how progress has gone. Uh, sorry it's a bit slow, but say so I just want to make sure, I want to be almost meticulous of it definitely works, it definitely fits, it goes in the right way. I've referenced of how I've taken it out to how I'm putting it back. Obviously that's why I double checked the selector drum just to make sure I had it in the right place and I didn't. So that, that helped by basically tracing my steps back, looking at photographs and obviously I've got the videos that obviously I've made for you to watch. So next thing to attack is the secondary shaft. Right, I've just fitted, that's the secondary plug end bearing, so literally it has to sit far enough in, so it's flush with, you can see my gloves through there, it's flush with the back, that's obviously got an o-ring on it, and then that connects nicely, so it's tough trying to get that in the right place. Alright, so the next one is put the shaft in place, put the actual main housing in place and then feed the shaft through and then press the bearing into the other side. So next job I've just loosely put the crank back in place because obviously I need the primary chain round it. I can slide the cam chain, just lift it up and move it over. I can't do the plastic gauge. I've ordered some online, it hasn't turned up. I just need to crack on at the moment and just mock this up. I can actually just lift this out, but I want to get basically all the rest of this in position and I shouldn't have to move it. So camshaft, uh, crankshaft is back in, so now all I've got to do is slide the secondary through, there's the main shaft, okay, so that bearing's in place, that bearing's on the end, so when that goes through I should be able to knock it through and then I can actually tap bearing in and then that will probably be it for this episode so I can't really go much further until this plastic age turns up so I hope hopefully soon I have uh, I have emailed them to say where is it the next thing to do is as I say get this secondary back through get the shaft through and tap the bearing back in. Alright so let's get this in position. This is probably where you need at least three pairs of hands. Right, so I've just quickly moved the oil pump, and as you can see, that's given me a lot more clearance, and the shaft has actually poked through. So, all I've got to do now is a big socket on the end, and just tap that back into position. 
is in the centre. As I say, I can lift this up slightly so I can slide the cam chain over when I need it. So I'll get that pressed in and then we'll put the oil pump back in. And then that will basically wrap up this well two part reassembly of the bottom end. As I say I can't do much more on the bottom end until I've actually got the plastic gauge which hopefully shouldn't be too long. Right, so join me when I've got this pressed back in. Alright, so there you go, that's all pressed back in. So all that's left to do, obviously I've got the oil pump to feed back underneath. And then I've got the bracket, the washer and the sprocket so I'll get the oil pump back in first and then we'll put these brackets back on so that's the oil pump back in and that's moving ok And the washer. Now for the sprocket. I right, just need to tap that in and then I can put on the circlip. Alright, so that's now in position. As you'll see, there's a slight ridge which is where the circlip just fits in. And one last job is the secondary. I've already put the new rubber o-ring round. 
also got new screws if you remember the old ones were pretty mashed so I'll flip this engine around and we'll put that last bit in for now Right, happy with how that's gone. Everything's moving freely. So I've just got obviously cam chain to go on which I can lift up and slide it over. And obviously the bearing shells when I've got the plastic gauge. Then after that, I can start with the com rods and then start reassembling the head. Still got the cleaning to do on the valves and the pistons, so hopefully I should have that done come the start of the next episode. And obviously, polish that and paint the sump. So that will be coming up in the next episode. Right, so thanks for joining me on that one. Um, as I said, it, it stretched into a two part episode. I had a feeling it might, I just wanted to take my time, make sure that everything went back in place and it was absolutely right. As I say, first time of doing this, so it, it's taken a while. So please bear with me on some things. Yes, you're going to say, obviously, with the crank, yes, I need to plastic gauge. But so I just wanted it basically in position so that I can see everything lines up, everything revolves, everything works, everything's back how it came out, which is good. As soon as the plastic gauge turns up, then I can hopefully crack on and get the shells done and then start, obviously, reassembling some more. Next episode is just basically cracking on with uh, get the sump sprayed up. Everybody said spray the sump, so I'll, I'll go ahead with that. Get the oil filler, oil filter cover, get that polished up. Carry on with the carbs. I'm also going to have a look at the frame. I did get quotes for basically uh, having the actual frame stripped and then repainted. It, it does come out at a few hundred pounds. I'm trying to do this on a budget as best I can. I'm going to have a look at actually stripping the frame myself. It's something I've got to learn, it's something I want to learn. The more I can do on this build for myself and learn how to do it, the better it is. I know sometimes it is easier just to pass it out, get somebody else to do it, pay them a load of money, it comes back, it looks great. But I actually want to learn this. The only thing that I'll probably ship out will be the wheels. That one, I've spoken to a few friends who have had a go, it is very difficult and I, I really don't want to get that wrong. So the wheels actually for the spokes will be shipped out and that will be done. But I think other than that, I will be tackling the whole project. The frame, the paintwork, everything except the wheels. So I say I've thought about it long and hard. I mean, let me know your thoughts in the comments box below if you think I'm wrong. Obviously it saves me a load of money, which is, which is always good. But it will actually teach me what to look for, how to do it. It's it's a learning process. So I say, let me know in the comments box below. But as usual, subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. So please like and subscribe. It is important to me. It's important to my channel. Links to other videos, top left and top right. And join me again next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.